kind of honestly, I feel like Bravely Default was a lot like that in that um, it rewarded you for grinding. Yeah, it did. It gave you ways um, to grind. So, like there was that whole like there was that class whose whole thing was just like instantly killing low level enemies. Oh shit! So yeah. like he was just like this is the class for grinding. You just equip this class and you just grind up your second as your secondary class and you just equip the passive that lets you do that. And you just grind out. Yes. Just grind and grind and grind and grind. I love when games have that. Um, Five has a really similar kind of nice thing. It's sort of like, you know, in Pokemon games where you can tell they knew that you were gonna hatch eggs outside the daycare, so they give you this really long yeah, stretch yeah, to bite. Yeah. yeah. Five's version of that is um, the Geomancer class. Yes. Which, at after you just get one level in it, which is quite quick, you get the Gaia ability. And um, it's great for equipping on casters. Like when you're leveling a white mage, you're leveling a black mage, you don't want to use up all your MP if you're a black mage, that kind of stuff. Um, because it just is free, doesn't cost any MP, and it will do a random effect. And normally, like, random effects in games can often be really bad. Like, um, I think there are actually some Pokemon abilities like that where it's like, you know, it does a random thing based on the weather or the terrain, yeah, and it sucks. But Gaia is usually really, really good and often it's tailored in such a way that the element of whatever you get to use um, with Gaia is actually going to be beneficial in the dungeon. Nice! Yeah, um, so you can just equip it to like every caster and your caster doesn't just sit there or just smack things with a, with a staff uselessly or burn through its MP. That's really useful. So, yeah. It's not quite as good as the Bravely Default thing where you get to just like kill, it kill the lower yeah. level stuff, but yeah. Like, I like, I figured... it's, it's nice when games obviously know, like, they know what they're about. Like, yeah. Entry Odyssey knows you're going to want to grind, so it gives you ways, it, it gives you methods to grind. Yeah. Maybe the default knows you're going to want to grind, it gives you methods to grind. Yeah. And so does Five. Like, even though it's such an old game, um, it has, like, really little tricks. Like, you can, there are all these statues you can kill in the basement of one particular castle, and they give you a ton of ability points, but not a lot of XP, so you can just grind your jobs there. Nice. And that's just really cool. And I think that's probably one of my main problems with Six, is that Six, the story is so strong, and the characters are so strong in Six, and there have been some narrative moments that have really been, like, well, I told you, like, the opera scene. Yeah. I was, like, angry it was so good. But then, right after the opera scene, you had to go through these two just abysmal dungeons. And it was like... This is just, like, really busting my groove, you know? Yeah, I... I obviously, like, I didn't... Have we have now discussed that I now we don't actually know Six as well as we thought. But it's yeah. like, it, might be another, it might be another one of those, like, sort of, like, awkward middle child ones. Like, four... I think it is. They like really nailed it with five. And yeah. I, I tried something so, kind of new. Say what we all will about seven. Yeah. Obviously not the greatest game ever made, but it's very fun. It's very. It good. is. It's a very good yeah. game. Yeah. We can. Everybody on on the planet likes to say that it's overhyped. Yeah. I think that's like the popular unpopular opinion to have now. Yeah. Whatever. Seven is a very good game. It was very well made. Um, yeah. So I feel like maybe six was the awkward middle step. I think you're it's right. Like the even and... numbered ones are all a little bit cursed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so true. It's a so true. A lot of people hate eight. I love eight, but I recognize its faults. But nine is like untouchably good. Ten is yeah. Like, I'm. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Ten, just, ten was also. <laughs> ten was kind of trying something new, and I am of the uh, the controversial opinion that what ten was trying to do was perfected in 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 uh, in thirteen. It yeah. not perfected, but it was improved upon. They nailed it in thirteen. Yeah, they, they seem like very similar yeah. names. Yeah. And a lot of people didn't like 12, but obviously we think 12 is amazing. Yes. Uh, yeah, and that was trying something new as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a 2 is the most awkward middle child game yeah. of, uh, of Final Fantasies. It's like Zelda 2. Yeah. Oh, it, like, gosh. Yeah. Which, really is Zelda trying something. Zelda became a side-scroller. <laughs> yeah, when Zelda tried to be a Mario game. Yeah. Well, I, well, well when Zelda tried to be a Castlevania I think it was more like what it was. It was, more, it was more like a Metroidvania game, I think. That is true. I'm gonna grind a Metroid little Metroidvania bit more. Zelda. <laughs> what a concept. Metroid. It was wild. And yeah, 2 was like... There's a lot going on in 2. It was like, 
oh my god. It was like, let's make Star Wars... Let's make Star Wars D&D uh, with an Elder Scrolls leveling system. I don't even know oh if it was god. before Elder Scrolls or I've, after Elder I've Scrolls. I have never touched two. It's... You know... This is cruel. I liked it more than I probably should have. That's alright. There were a lot fewer I hate this and want to stop moments in that game than I thought there would be. And... I very hilariously got really stuck in Two's method of thinking. Okay. Where all the way up until probably five, I was still like, oh no, I have to use magic or I won't get better at it. Right, because you I level need... up spells by using them in Two. Yes, and it's not even like, oh, I'm going to level up, I'm going to use fire so I'll level up all my black magic. No, it will level up only that spell only specifically. And you I've only a gain bunch of RPGs MP. that are kind of like that. That have that system where you have to use spells to level up the associated thing. Yeah, and like, I, I really get it on one level because it makes sense. It logically makes sense. Yeah, but from a gameplay play perspective, especially when there's also a me mechanic where you only gain more MP by running through your MP. Yeah. Oh That's God. a problem. That's annoying. Yeah, I've that's played. A big I've problem. also played. It's so it's so hard now because like I've, it's been a long time that I've been playing video games, and so like I know that I've encountered certain mechanics like these, but I can't place which games they were in, which really yeah. hurts me. Yeah. I for like I know at this Aww. point that I have flat out forgotten games that I've played, which is a very weird and bad feeling. Yeah, I have been experiencing that feeling a lot with my Final Fantasy project. Yeah, um, I think that's, it's, the thing with, that's the thing with Six, where it was like, I, f I was like certain that I had played it because I knew so many yeah. people had played it and it had been recommended to me so many times that I was just like, I must have played it. It's like when some, yeah. it's, it's like when there's like a very popular movie from our, your childhood that you know a lot of people saw and so you're just kind of like, yeah, I must have seen it because everybody saw yeah. it. And then you finally Absolutely. see it and you're like, no, I've never seen this. I have never seen this before in my life. Like even the end of four, I was positive that I had beat Final Fantasy IV several times. I do not think I ever beat it until like a couple of months ago. Yeah, I know that I never end up finishing four because I watched my cousin play it, and then I played the port of it, and I think I played the yes, like the Super Nintendo version on an emulator, but I never finished yeah. it. I would get to a certain point and kind of be like, I I have experienced what I want from this game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm exactly. It. Yeah, it's such a funny thing. I think what happened to me was I played Chrono Trigger. I definitely finished Chrono Trigger because I remember it, and then yeah, just the collective. The collective unconscious, like the the common human experience, yeah, is what happens. And yeah, it's funny. I'm looking forward to getting to seven because I don't remember what the actual gameplay was like in seven. Uh, it's it's turn based combat. It's like well, it's yeah, like but TV gauge. Yeah, I guess what I and there's a limit breaking too. But I guess what I mean is more like um, like on paper six looks like a really fun system because. So a lot of the characters have really neat and useful abilities. Yeah, it's got a very varied system. Yeah, and a lot of the characters have, like, just neat stuff. Like, um, Edgar, the king, he uses tools. And they're very powerful, and, like, there's, like, a, like a, like a darkness thing you can inflict, and it's pretty, like, accurate, pretty useful. Um, Celie has this ability where she just uses her sword to absorb magic. Nice. Which is really cool. Um, but then other characters have really kind of womp womp ones, like uh, Cyan, who's like the the samurai kind of character. Yeah. Who I really like. I don't use him in my party ever because he has this Bushido ability where you just sort of like... Like, it's actually really cool. Bushido! Like, thematically, yeah. <laughs> Bushido! Where he's like, you know, that, that samurai thing where you like you hold your blade and you wait and then you strike at the last second kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, Rina it's has that. It's like, oh shit. Oh no. It's that where like you wait and you charge it up and then you press X when you're like ready and stuff is. Oh, happening. that just sounds annoying. It is annoying. And then all he does is go around and uh, hit enemies a variety of times, like up to four times so far. I guess maybe it eventually gets unlocked to eight. But they're not even very strong attacks, so it's like, okay, so I waited all that time to do something that's, like, cool on paper, but, like, not actually helpful. 
So I never end up bringing him along, and it's a shame because um, his character is very funny and very cool. Yeah, I. The thing, the the big thing that seven and eight especially did was they eliminated a lot of that um, like individual character identity in combat because like yes they made it so that every character is everything because it's just materia and and like junctioning magic and stuff like you don't yeah like they're like characters in seven have like and eight and an eight have like sort of inclinations in their natural stats that make them slightly better at some things but the only thing that really differentiates them from each other or what their role might be in battle is um their limit breaks and their weapons yeah. and their weapon like Aerith is never going to have a particularly strong attack and she'll so she'll be right. i guess be a mage but like materia you can put the same materia on anybody yeah, and that kind of hap ends up happening in 6 as well, because um, even though every character has their own ability, you can put espers on anyone so they can all learn whatever magic. Yeah. And you end up just kind of overwhelmed by overwhelmed by choice, but not in a way that's like interesting. Just sort of overwhelmed with, I can do whatever, and none of it really means anything. Yeah. If that makes any sense. For sure. 7 yeah. still, I think 8, eight completely like democratized it then that anybody could be anything yeah. their, their natural stat inclinations amounted for very little because your stats were completely determined by what your magic conjunction to them seven right. seven still had a certain amount of like so like you know claw cloud 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 and, Tifa are actually and Baron have high physical yeah. attack and like eris has high magic and whatever but like most of them don't have that much in it, that much differentiating them i think eris is really the only one where her attack is just bad. Yeah, I was like, just gonna say like, I'm thinking. Because like Red Thirteen, like the rest of them, they're all like their their regular weapon attack is like useful. Like it's always good. Yeah, no one else is really particularly inclined towards magic, are they? No, but they're all like they can all use it. It's... Yeah, and it's like fine. Yeah, it's yeah. 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 Now that I'm thinking about it, like you can really just use anybody for anything in seven. It's just like their limit breaks that change Oops. stuff. I'm really interested to see. Yeah, if the level design is more fun in seven, because I really don't remember that about the game at all. I like the level. So the, the, the thing, the thing that I like about seven is the level design because it was oh, the, good. the main thing that made it feel like you were playing like a new fancy game. Because the the levels are like bigger and have like more. You explore them oh, differently. Oh yeah. They're not. I wouldn't say that they're like particularly hard to figure out or anything like. But it's they're very beautiful. And they're very yeah. Scenic. There's lots of very cool scenery in seven. Oh gosh, that's something very positive that I can say about six. In addition to the amazing soundtrack, I think six is where Uematsu really nailed it. Is yeah. man, like he the hit a stride with scenery, six, seven, eight, and nine actually. Definitely, the like the the sprite art on the levels in six is just so stunning, especially because they have like all the magitech and like machinery and stuff happening yeah it's like chrono trigger chrono triggers back yeah. backgrounds have that quality to them that's why when i beat chrono trigger i thought that i beat six well, they're very guess. visually similar yeah like, especially the way that they do technology it looks very similar yeah. magitech in six looks a lot like the technology in chrono trigger it's so true and they were like it's right so around true. the same time, I think. So they and I think involved a lot of the same people. <laughs> they probably did. They probably did. Oh no, Chisato is D E D dead. Oh, Chisato. She's not altogether unskilled at dying. Yeah. She's not dying. I, this the the enemies here are also just like strong and. We were in the the hardest like encounter right now too. Yeah. So. Oh, Ashton is a. Uh, Ashton got stoned. He's stoned. He's stoned. I got cure stone somewhere, I think. Yeah, seven is seven is good, honestly. I like a lot of things about seven. I don't think there's anything that I strongly dislike about seven. No, I it's, think that the only thing I I didn't particularly like about seven was how people used to go on about it. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I don't there's I can't really think about a major criticism for seven because it's a very fun game. And yeah. it's like I like it because it's silly still. It is a very yeah. it's a very Final Fantasy game. It's a very but it's yes. so it's also super nineties. It's incredibly nineties. It 90s. is the, like really, the like really cyberpunk is. kind of stuff from like yeah. leftover from the 80s that turned into like I don't know it's like the pre millennium yeah thing the with world the was a different place back then it was like 
kind of the high water mark of of society so far. Yeah, the, nothing will top the '90s. Says everybody who his childhood took place in the '90s. Yeah, sure, we didn't really have the internet that much, and no. everything was a lot slower. But you know, I'm just never in my life. Like, I know that it maybe hasn't aged well. I get it, but the part in Seven where you have to cross dress, I it remains also... one of the most like weirdly enjoyable iconic final fantasy moments to me and it's also yes. just one of the most vivid my f- most vivid memories of gaming in general like that little town yeah. thing that whose name i cannot remember at the moment where you have to like where you go and you have to cross dress as cloud and you have to like collect all these things i i don't know what it is but that specifically is so burned into my brain like everything me like, too the whole aesthetic of that the whole like industrial aesthetic yeah. of that little town like everything like the music that goes on there everything about Midgar is so ah. it's so fully realized yeah Midgar is so cool it's so cool I think the only disappointing thing to me about Seven is that you don't spend more time in Midgar honestly and you don't I ever, agree you don't ever really get to fully explore Midgar you get to explore parts of it and you do come back frequently to do certain things but the yeah. best the best portion of that game for me is the whole part of us like a leading up to when you finally escape from Midgar. Like yeah, the think... rest of the game is very good, but that first section is just like, oh, chef's kiss. Yeah, I I think that if the whole game took place in Midgar, it wouldn't be bad. Agreed, honestly. The rest of the like, world is very cool and you go to some cool places, but the, but I the, remember almost none of it. Yeah, I remember Midgar specifically so much better than anything else. Yeah. I remember like uh Nibelheim because yeah. there's that scene with Tifa. I remember the like weird tower defense game that I like yeah. kind of hated, but also kind of loved. I remember the first time I tried it, I had no idea what was happening. And then eventually I tried it again and I figured it out and I was like living. I was it was living. One of, <laughs> it was one of those things where it made me think that I wanted to play tower defense games. Like how in, in Spyro, there's this mini game where you're skateboarding and made me think yeah. I like skateboarding games. I remember like buying a Tony Hawk game and being like, this sucks actually. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> and I only it's... like it in this one context. Yeah, I just, and I, I probably spent like 50 hours doing the skateboarding mini game in Inspiro. Oh, I, Inspiro, it I, was used to, great. I used to play the, the levels where you got to fly for Oh hours. my god. The, the, the best thing about those, those levels Oh no, you've gone quiet. Every other time after that, it was a time trial where you were just trying to beat your previous time, so you could take as long as you wanted in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You cut out in the middle of that, but I think I inferred what you were saying when you were gone. <laughs> um, so, like, the first time you beat it, you yeah. had, had to do it in, like, a minute and 30 seconds or whatever it was, and if it ran out, you were right. done, you had to start over. But if you beat it, then every time after that, the, time, the clock was counting up instead of down, so you just had an infinite amount of time. So I would just, like, fly around. That's all I wanted right. to do. I just wanted to fly around. Yeah, I just want to fly around the game. Yeah. It's like in, in Ocarina of Time, I used to just gallop around on my pony. Yeah, in Majora's Mask, I used to just, um, that one long section of river that you could swim as a Zora and do tricks. Yes! And, and, like, go through stuff. That's all I would do. Or I'd roll around yes. with Goron. Yeah. I would go over to my best friend's house who had the N64 just to swim around as a Zora. That was yes. the thing that we did one summer. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah, now I'm just, think, I'm just thinking about the, the first part of Seven, and it's just so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's, it's so, like the, it's... The, like like going to the going to Shinra and like rescuing Red Thirst. Like the whole trip up Shinra, Shinra felt so big and expansive, and like yes, and like ah, oh, it's so Japanese too. Midgar yeah. is so 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 like like future speculative post and like post industrial yeah. Tokyo. It is. It's 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 very like it's it's ghost in the shell e. Yes, in that it's way. very that. It's, it's extremely that. ghost in the shell. It's extremely that extremely blade runner like but through like all like, that. But through Japan, yeah. yeah. What am I um am I doing this with her? Cause I, re- I remember it took me when I the first time that I played seven and I like sat down and I like really I'm did it. Yeah, you're doing customized, so like metal casting and stuff like that with her. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, and functionality and okay, cool, cool, um, cool. craft. So I remember the first time that I like when I finally sat down to play seven because the very first time that I played it, I was like, "This isn't like anything like eight, and I don't like it." Right. Yeah. And I, 
Yeah. And I was like, this isn't Legend of Dragoon, it's a ripoff and yeah. bad. <laughs> so, once I had done that, I, it, I felt like... I think it took me just a because I, I was I was pretty young so I still wasn't very good at video games but getting yeah you know, getting through Midgar alone probably took me like twenty or thirty hours or something like it took me a while yeah maybe not that long but it took me a while and it felt like it felt like an entire game just doing that getting yeah Shinra, Shinra Corp felt so big there was so much treasure inside that you yeah could, that you could get and that you couldn't get it seemed because there were all these treasure chests that were really hard to get to and you had to like get key cards and you had to like explore and you had to go to the right floors oh at the right God, time like it just yeah. it just felt felt like an, an entire game took place before you even left midgar and then you finally left it midgar was... and the world opened up and it was just like holy crap yeah i remember that feeling of like there's more yeah there's <laughs> more i really thought that that was going to be the whole game yeah me too me too even Especially though i knew that i was only like... playing the first disc of three i knew there were three discs and i was just like what's gonna be on the other disc like, where could they possibly go from here? It's like the opposite effect of, like, when you know you're watching the season finale of something. Yeah. And you you see on the thing that there's only ten minutes left. And you're like, how are they going to wrap this up? And they manage to wrap it up. It's yeah. the opposite of that. It's like, this is wrapped up now. Where are we going? Yeah. And yeah. I think my biggest... So I guess if we're talking about disappointments with Seven, and this is not a major one, but it's just kind of thinking about what Seven could have been. Yeah. I just wish that they... So, like, you get little bits of that, like, nifty industrial cyberpunk kind of aesthetic scattered through the rest of the world which i really love i really love the like yeah. weird almost post-apocalyptic way that yeah. technology crops up in the world because it seems there's like this it's really neat because obviously the game is a lot about like um wealth inequality <laughs> amazingly it wealth is yeah and industrialization because you have all these cities where there's tons of technology oh Ooh. shit <laughs> you gonna die i just saved it's, it's chill anyway um, yes <laughs> where you have all, so you have Midgar, but then you also have a town. You have these like a town like Costa del Sol, where there's Is like Costa del Sol from Seven. It's from Seven. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay, yeah. Where there's like no, it's like a funny little seaside village and you have all these random like and you have like where yuffie is from where there's not really technology or you have all these towns where it's just right. like these crappy little shanty towns yeah 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 and there's all this old and tech lying around and so like i i remember thinking when i was playing seven that i was playing i thought it was a game where like the world had ended and been yeah. rebuilt but no it's about you know the environment yeah <laughs> it's an environmentalist industrialist horror tale it is yeah yeah, I am really looking forward to playing it as someone who can understand those concepts. Me too. I think the last time that I played Seven, I was in my 20s, and I was like, this game is good, actually. Good, comma, yeah. actually. Although I think that was around the time when I was like, this game is good, comma, actually, semicolon, however, <laughs> comma, However. <laughs> it is not as good as everyone insists that it is. In this essay, I will. Yeah, it is a very good game. It's just not the best game ever made. <laughs> No, so, like, well, we like, all... We all have a different opinion of what that is, but people talk about it like it's the definitive... Game. Something. The know. definitive piece of work. I will say the thing that it is Period. the definitive of. It is the definitive of that aesthetic. No game has accomplished that aesthetic quite the way that Seven did. I agree with that. At least certainly no game I've heard of. Yeah. And it nails, some, also... it nails something about the 90s in it that I don't know how to articulate. Yeah. For me, it also nails exactly, and like this isn't, isn't actually something something that one should or even can strive to achieve. But for me, it also nails uh, what '90s localization was. Like I don't remember there being many localization errors with it. Well, it's not like errors so much as it's just kind of like funky. Mm. I really do have to play it again, because the last time I played it was over 15 years ago now. Yeah. But I remember it being, like, like kind of better than Dragoon, for example, but it was still sort of like, this is a funny... This is a kind of a funny look with some kind of funny choices um, that make it more charming. Yeah, I honestly usually find those things make it more charming. I don't yeah, really agreed. remember anything about the look, which I think means that the, the mistakes are pretty minor, but they are there. Yeah. It, it, it's definitely not on the level of Dragoon. I don't think anything is on the level no. of Dragoon. I think Dragoon, Dragoon exists in a class of its own in terms of, like, <laughs> underdone, underbaked localizations. <laughs> like, that, one, like, that every... one needed another hour in the oven. At least, yeah. It was, it was not done. It wasn't fully mixed, It was even. still raw. 
Yeah. <laughs> this will I'm so rock. excited to play it though. <laughs> I'm so excited. I am. Do we want to. How are we feeling about going to the boss? We can give it a whirl. Um, yeah. I'm going to say if we try the boss and we fail, then we should take a break and maybe you can. Like take a break from just recording grind. and you can you can grind a little bit before we record okay. next. The, cool, that makes sense. The trying to do the boss, but we can see if we can handle the boss. Yeah. I don't remember anything about this boss. Okay, which is either a good or a bad sign. Yeah. <laughs> I compulsively over level, so oh. it is it is like very common right. for me to encounter a boss and just kind of be like, that was easy. And because but it's because I'm like just like so egregiously over leveled. Yeah. My name is Lover. I see you've been caught. I've already killed the real. Okay. Okay. Ah! Uh. Oh! Let me get to the points. I think Lover. the thing that makes the Loke of. Dragoon so exceptional is that it was such a like widely released and publicized game. And it was like, by Sony themselves. Yeah, and this was like this was kind of before like triple A and prestige gaming really seemed to be a thing. Like things didn't get very big releases, but I just remember seeing yeah. games for Dragoon a lot. Yeah. So it felt like a very important game at the time. And then the fact that yeah, the localization back... was such a disaster. It's such a disaster. It's so beautiful. I know, it's a masterpiece. I wouldn't change a thing about it at no. all. Like, there's not a single word that I would change. I want it to stay as janky. As yes, <laughs> not a single word. Yeah. There's something about I would it that never, is perfect. I would never want anyone to re-record re, uh, any of those lines. No, I want them to stay exactly as they are. Will you guarantee the life of your hostage? Well, now I wonder what happens here if you uh, don't have Celine. Maybe it's just whoever you're is or whoever. Yeah, isn't the protagonist? That's probably why she says of your hostage, because then it's yeah. fake. Foolish thoughts will merely hasten your death. I can like hear these lines in like kind of in like bad anime dubbing. Yeah. <laughs> And as a bonus, I shall take your life also, like spoken too fast to fit the lip flaps. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Don't I, worry, I, I, after I, I have killed you, I shall release the hostages promised. Hostages promised. Fucking so sad. Here's the ah! enemy. Ah! Okay, uh, I guess we kill the ads. Uh, or I'll, I'll kill the ads. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, let's try that. Let's try that way first. Yeah, they're nasty. We don't like them. We don't like they're that. Nasty boys. They're, they're stinky boys. We don't like them. Nasty boys. They're not spicy boys. No, they're stinky. I'm glad that we just got Shisato honking through this entire ordeal. <laughs> Honk! It's <laughs> 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 like a goose. Dragon howl. They're funny looking. What are these little guys? You fought this model before. Um, it was a boss in one of the in that mine. Okay. Um, so they they like to cast spells that hurt a lot. So you just kind of want to just kind of want to smack them around. Okay, cool. I think I killed one already. Yeah, it looks like you did. Nice, 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 nice. I like that their shield thing is like a pyramid of light. It's very nifty. Yeah, it's cool looking. I like how they just sort of sit in it. Yeah. That's quite cool. They're one of my favorite enemy types, just because they- I like their, like, little- their goat horns, I like the, their little shield thing. Yeah! I whoa, they have, like, spears that come out. It's like he's actually, wild. like, he's, like, projectile horning you, he's, like, leaning forward and, like, oh. sticking his horns out. I only can tell this because the it froze exactly on the frame where he was attacking you. <laughs> yes! We could see. Yeah. I like the way that they're kind of upright and they kind of- the way they bend is very satisfying. Yeah. I should probably get some, uh, MP on Claude. Claude the summer. Kurado. But I also just don't want to stop bullying this guy. Oh, I, you know what? I kept thinking that my audio was screwing up whenever she cast silence, but it's just what silence does. Yeah. Which makes sense. I think you already killed the boss. Okay, <laughs> 
don't remember this being this being harder. I guess the boss is not very hard, but the enemies are. Or is there like a second boss? Maybe I don't know. I guess I don't know maybe exactly. I'm just that good, Chrissy. Maybe. Actually, maybe we leveled enough. It's just that you're this good and you're guiding me. What a fool I am. What a. F <sighs> ah! Ah! What a fool I am! What a this is how that would fool be said. I am! I am! What a but fool it I looked pretty am! Am! What a fool I am! <sighs> We're having a fire sale. There's so <laughs> it doesn't. I don't watch a lot of job anime now, but I feel like they've managed to I, I don't know if they're just better at like maybe reanimating slightly so that the lip flaps fit better but i, I feel like that's not as much of an issue in modern dubbing the, like, i think the, like, they also try they try less hard to match it up because i think people like they dub under the under they dub with the what am i trying to say here when people watch a dub they know it's a dub whereas back in the 90s they wanted to hide the fact that it was dubbed you know what right, i mean yeah so I think now they maybe just don't care as much yeah, about I don't matching. Know. I don't. I, I I haven't watched a dubbed anime in quite a while because I'm like I'm like I'm um I'm an appearance. I like I'm just an appearance. Just like an appearance and it's dubbed anime. I just think it's better. I actually don't give a shit at <laughs> all. Um, but, uh, what is this? What is this indeed? Oh, I can hear oh, it now. Boy. Oh good. I'm glad you get to tune in for this really upsetting musical track. Yeah. It literally, uh, it literally I got audio as soon as it started. <laughs> oh, how strange, but also good. Yeah. I um, I know that they do care about the flaps a little bit, because I remember there being a big thing about how they changed Love Arrow Shoot and Love Live to something different. Which, and people got, which is very funny, because it's literally already, already in, in English. English. Appar and people got very angry about it, and I think they were even, like, saying mean stuff to the voice actress on Twitter. Because, like, Ugh. most dub actresses and actors aren't very famous the way they are in Japan, right? No, so... and they also don't have anything to do with the writing or the scripts, people. Leave them exactly. alone. They're just doing and I th their job. <laughs> Maybe I'm making up fake history, but in my memory, like, the voice actress, like, the English voice actress of Umi was like, look, we tried a whole bunch of different things. I don't. I, I. They just got me to record a bunch of different stuff. I didn't have any say in which one they chose. We don't know why they chose it. Maybe it would match up with the lip flaps better or something. Which would be very weird because it's like it's English. Like you, I don't understand that. Something it's it's a very strange choice, but apparently, like the voice actors did record Love Arrow Shoot, and they ended up choosing a different take. That's basically. so funny. Maybe it just sounded better. It is funny. The, yeah, and like is, love arrow shoot doesn't make sense in English, really. No, it doesn't sound like you say it without like a Japanese inflection or like Japanese pronunciation, and it's just kind of like love arrow shoot, like love arrow shoot, love arrow yeah, shoot, but, love arrow shoot. It would be like like I think they change it to love arrow shot or something, which makes sense. That makes sense more. It's kind of like Sailor Moon attack names, like yeah. <laughs> like wide pressure or like sparkling wide, pressure. wide pressure or like earth shaking yeah. like they earth don't make real like shaking. i love them but like if you're making a show for children you probably want to put actual english phrases in it right yeah so yep, pretty much is that my love i don't know wow. i just don't know are you all right rena it looked like it was a guy. It looked like it was her dad, maybe. Just because it was, like, a boy-looking person with short hair. That was blue. Yeah, it was blue. The jewel of love. Man, that boss was a complete pushover. It was the easiest one I fought, actually, yeah. in these fields. That's so But you're funny. right. The, the random encounters were the hardest, for sure. Oh, definitely. That I, After... that I definitely remembered accurately. Yeah. The second one had the second hardest fights to me because it had so much petrification and yeah. those really big, like, kind of guys that remind me of behemoths. This seems like a logical place to stop. Sure. I feel quite satisfied. I'm starting to get quite hungry.